Hi everyone and welcome to the Sonokiest tutorials. Hop on, buckle in and join the race to use ultrasound first for any imaging needs in our pediatric patients. The goal of this podcast is to provide you with a short and practical video instruction. We've got the evidence. It's in the Sonokiest literature bank. Today, let's talk about the sonographic diagnosis of pneumonia in children. No more chest x-rays or CT scans as your first line study. The ultrasound can handle even a crying Whitley baby just fine. Kids are excellent candidates for pulmonary sonography. The chest wall is usually thinner and their thorax is generally not as wide. Not that the width is an obstacle to imaging, it simply makes a comprehensive study much more time consuming. According to the international guidelines published in 2012, chest is divided into eight sonographic zones, four on each side. I'd say work systematically and grab a spot scan of each zone. Don't forget to throw in some posterior use, especially when locking for mnemonic consolidations or loculated pleural fusions. If you happen to perceive anything worrisome in auscultation, you could obviously start with that particular area. Now, when it comes to transducers, rest assured that I have successfully used them all. Let the probe availability and the patient size determine your choice. There is absolutely no need to feel strongly and argue about one over another. Oh, and by the way, don't toss your stethoscope just yet. Incorporating clinical clues can actually improve the diagnostic accuracy of your sonographic evaluations. Those focal wheezes, localized crackles, decreased breath sounds, or pleuritic pain will likely guide your probe to the area of an underlying pathology. But before we move on to discuss pneumonia-related findings, let's refresh some information about the normal sonographic appearance of the chest. Starting with the skin surface, down to the pleural line, we are looking at the actual components of the chest wall. Anything below the pleural line is artifactual in nature, including the rib shadows. air filled structures, such as healthy aerated lungs, do not image well with ultrasound. All we get to see are the A-lines, or the horizontal reverberation artifacts caused by the pleural reflections. Let's mention that in younger children with non-calcified ribs, one can actually image through them and still have their visual reference. In a dynamic clip of a healthy lung, we got to observe pleural sliding and common tail artifacts. As we move on to the lung basis, it is important to note that the spine shadow should not extend above the diaphragm. Presence of a mirror image artifact above the diaphragm indicates a normal exam in that area. Given significant changes caused by a mnemonic process in the lungs, ultrasound turns out to be an excellent diagnostic tool. More importantly, it is also quite applicable in the serial follow-up evaluation, both in the outpatient and inpatient settings. By now, you're probably wondering, what is the actual key to visualizing pneumonia and ultrasound? Well, it is about parenchymal consolidation, or less air and more fluid in the lungs. Once this consolidation reaches the pleura, it can be seen with ultrasound. Reportedly, in the adult studies, up to 98% of pneumonias extend to the pleura, particularly in symptomatic patients. Given the smaller volume of lung parenchyma in kids, pleural involvement is likely more rapid and more extensive than in adults. Based on a few pediatric studies, we can conclude that well over 90% of pneumonias can be diagnosed with ultrasound. So let's look, take a look at the sonographic manifestations of pneumonias. First of all, we should talk about finding livers in the chest. If you happen to see one, you're certainly not hallucinating, but please don't confuse it with the mirror image artifacts. 
unless it truly looks like a mirror image and is located immediately above the diaphragm. Typical ultrasound image of pneumonia is a liver-like appearance of the parenchyma. Hence the term hepatization is used to describe a pneumonic consolidation. The pleural line might appear less echogenic and pleural sliding may be reduced or even absent. Linear, branching or lens-shaped echogenic structures are often visible within, within consolidation and represent sonographic air bronchograms. They are consistent with air inclusions or air-filled bronchioli and bronchi. If you happen to see movement on real-time ultrasound, you just cut a dynamic air bronchogram and conveniently, you just ruled out atelectasis. Notably, sonographic consolidation and dynamic air bronchograms have the highest specificity for the diagnosis of pneumonia. Several linear or branching hypocoic structures may often be seen within the consolidated lung. Here indicated with the yellow arrows, such sonographic fluid bronchograms represent bronchi filled with fluid, which might be mucus or pus. In contrast to the normal vessels, they do not have visible walls and don't show signs of perfusion on collar Doppler examination. Pleural fusions may be associated with pneumonia and they are easily detected by ultrasonography. Presence of fluid in the pleural cavity lets us visualize the thoracic spine, hence the spine sign extends well above the diaphragm. Simple pleural fusions appear anechoic on ultrasound, which strongly contrasts with the complex effusions in which fibrin strands can form honeycomb-like structures. Such are typically concerning for empyema in the setting of a known or suspected pneumonia. Thanks to ultrasonography, it is quite easy to follow evolution of pleural effusions. It doesn't take a lot of training to differentiate a resolving effusion from one that is becoming more complex. We should also mention the presence of focal beelines in an appropriate clinical scenario could be indicative of pneumonia. However, if you happen to notice the fused bilateral beelines in a child with a clinical picture of a lower respiratory tract infection, alternative diagnosis such as bronchiolitis should be strongly considered. At follow-up, this appearance of the beelines is consistent with lung re -aeration. And last but not least, let's note that a variety of subpleural lesions and pleural irregularities can be observed in patients with pneumonia. Such subpleural lesions can vary in size and shape from discrete and linear to large and triangular or circular structures. In summary, the sonographic diagnosis of pneumonia is much easier than you think. Next time you evaluate a little patient with lower respiratory symptoms, don't just order a chest x-ray, grab the ultrasound probe and try to look for hepatization, air bronchograms, or pleural effusions. You might actually surprise yourself by finding some focal beelines or even subtle subpleural lesions. As with any other point-of-care ultrasound application, it is all about clinical integration. Please, don't use it to screen asymptomatic patients. Generally speaking, clinical ultrasound performs best when used to rule pathology in, especially at the early stages of your sonographic education. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please, 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 don't hesitate to email me with your comments and concerns. I'd be happy to discuss them all.